Hello and welcome to another episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm Krish Mohan. Talking about the weather was always so boring, right? Anytime you stood around at a party and someone would say, boy, great weather we're having, huh? That was an instant note in my brain to never talk to this person again. I mean, those were the great days when we didn't care about how the fate of our species was connected to the mundane weather. Things are not that simple today, not when fall and spring have disappeared from our seasons and temperatures are just shifting erratically and, we, and we're having constant anomalies with disasters. So now when someone brings up the weather, we have to assess whether they are in agreement that there is man-made climate change, a denier, or someone that's going to talk at you about seasonal affective disorder we get it trevor you get sad in the winter everybody gets sad in the winter and this is the same reason why donald trump as the president decided that he's not going to sign the paris climate accords he probably didn't want the glory of the trump name to be associated with a boring topic like the weather or climate change Now, the Paris Climate Accord was basically a voluntary agreement that countries were going to join in and make sure that they were going to stop punching the planet, well, everywhere, just everywhere. Now, this proves a few things. Firstly, it proves that Trump might think that the Paris Climate Accords was like a French conspiracy to control the weather, and that is America's job. Every time he brings it up, he keeps talking about how jobs are taken away, but never says how many or what jobs were taken away. Soon, we will hear that Donald Trump is denouncing the French press because it has taken good American jobs away. Secondly, it proves that the Trump administration has voluntarily chosen to continue making life more difficult for us and the planet. No one was forcing us to sign this. So for the last seven to eight months, we've basically said we voluntarily choose to ignore the major changes in the literal world around us. If you can't see the smoke, you can't see the fire. He just approved the Dakota Access and Keystone Excel pipelines. He boasts that this has created jobs, but we already know that it hasn't. It's created 35 jobs. I mean, if if we were smart about this, we uh, about creating jobs, we would look into solar and train people that lost their jobs in coal mines and oil rigs to work on those. I mean, we've basically created millions of jobs just on a hypothetical. But the problem is no one can say that the Republicans created those great and safe jobs. We'd have to thank the sun. And the sun is the greatest enemy of the Republicans. I I mean, have you ever seen Mitch McConnell or Paul Ryan or shit, even Marco Rubio out in the sun? No. Why? It's their enemy. It's their weakness. Usually after two minutes in the sun, they have to dip themselves in in an oil vat that has leaked from a pipeline to make sure that their skin is kept taut. Their skin is only kept together when they bathe in the oil that has tainted a poor person's water supply. Thirdly, since the American leadership has decided to back away from fixing the planet, the planet is now desperately proving the fact that climate change is in fact real this year alone in one month we had five different hurricanes hit landfall in the atlantic southeast and a rampant fire that is just blazing up the western half of this country the planet is pretty much playing a shitty sleepover game with us now right it's just like hey humans you guys want to drown to death or burn to death gun to your head drown to death or burn to death and you have to choose or else we can't have our hot chocolate or braid each other's hairs okay and i don't care why just pick one this year we have had five 
hurricanes hit landfall in the southeast Atlantic alone in a matter of six weeks. It's like the Murphy's Law of climate change. But the question remains to be asked, is the number of hurricanes related to human-made climate change? According to most climate scientists, no. But the link to climate change is in the intensity of these storms. In recent years, we have seen more Category 4 and 5 hurricanes all across the world. I mean, hurricanes feed off warmer weather, like an introvert feeds off the topic of weather for human interaction. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, the temperature of the ocean has increased approximately 1 degree Celsius warmer than previous years. I know some people are looking at me going, it's just one degree, who cares? Okay, well, imagine that your body is increased in temperature by one degree and stays that way forever. You would lose your mind thinking that you were sick all the time and people would be using you as the human furnace. You'd be a, a circus sideshow act for until the novelty of that wore off and then you'd probably be bankrupt and just eventually you'd get arrested for walking into a TJF Fridays completely nude to cool off at the bar. That is where the pl planet's water surface is right now. In some parts of the Gulf, the water surface was 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. That's, that's hotter than most soups at your grandmother's house. So, so what does that mean? Well, in order for hurricanes to lose some steam, huh? Do you, you guys get what I, what I did? Anyway, in order for them to decrease in size and strength, cooler water from the deep mixes and churns with the warm water at the surface, cooling things off. Similar to how an introvert finds common ground with someone at a party and chills out. But since the water is warmer, there isn't much of a cooling process, so these storms just intensify and hit landfall hard. Much like Hurricane Harvey, Irma, Maria, and the lesser-known Jose and Katya, the speed of these hurricanes were amplified at the very last minutes, which we've never seen before. It's, a, it's a, like a shocking event, like an introvert making out with the hot girl at the party. I mean, who'd have thunk it? But when you add that much heat to that situation, surprising things are bound to happen. In the case of the introvert, heat and confidence led to a pretty great one-night stand. In the case of Texas, Florida, and Puerto Rico, it's like you're stuck in a bad relationship there's no escape from because you tried to break up with that person, but then you got stranded on an island somewhere together. Now, Noah has said that this will take some time to figure out the exact links to climate change. Look, I'm all for scientific research to be done the right way, but we should be making this a priority. I mean, maybe if we figure out how this is linked to climate change, which it seems to be, we can take the appropriate measures to make sure to not repeat our actions again. And maybe we can think of a way to take care of each other too. After one of these five hurricanes, the territory of Puerto Rico is in dire straits. No power, no water, no help. If this was a suburban white girl, we could just fix the problem by distracting her with a pumpkin spice latte. We could just just drone bomb it right to her, right? We just fire pumpkin spice lattes to wherever she was stranded. And yeah, I mean, eventually we'd send over the military and the fire brigade and everybody from mainstream media till that girl could be saved and continue to be blind to the global society she is a part of. And Trump did finally go down there and try to give aid to the people of Puerto Rico. He claims that this has really put a strain on America's budget. Actually, Donald, uh, America has put a strain on America's budget from funding endless wars with billions and billions of dollars and 
bailing out predatory banks on Wall Street to push an agenda of divide and the constant Republican oil bats. I mean, all of that has made Amer- the excess of American capitalism tired and run ragged. All of this could be used for, for health care and education and appropriate research on climate change. And I know I've talked about the war budget a, a bunch, brought this argument a whole bunch of times, but it's still true. And if I had a dollar for every time I talked about the war budget distracting us from solving actual problems, I still wouldn't have as much money as the war budget. Trump made a claim that the situation in Puerto Rico was no Katrina. And you know what? He is right. Okay, that that was just one hurricane. This is five. Right? This means that our actions to help and rebuild and revitalize that community should have been five times faster. But but fans of mathematics would say that it was five times faster. Five times nothing is still nothing. Trump also threw paper towels at a crowd in Puerto Rico, a country that needs clean water, electricity, and the rights of a real state. He figured, well, Bounty is the quicker picker-upper, and hurricanes leave a lot of water, so he did a good job by helping. The man on the brawny label said that he was as proud as Trump wants his dad to be. In addition to five hurricanes, the expiration on the Jones Act waiver is also causing major issues with getting aid to Puerto Rico. This comes as he allowed a 10-day waiver of the Jones Act to lapse, restricting shipments of food, fuel, and medicine from foreign-flagged ships, as nearly half of the island still lacks clean water and nearly 90 percent lacks electricity. The expiration of the Jones Act waiver came over the fierce opposition of San Juan Mayor Carmen Juline Cruz, who blasted the Trump administration's slow response to the hurricane, tweeting on Sunday, power collapses in San Juan Hospital, with four patients now now being transferred out, have requested support from FEMA, nothing. Federal emergency... It's a waiver matter. for 10 days, and people, their eyes might glaze over to hear, what is the Jones Act? But the idea that Caribbean countries could get aid from other countries, like, for example, Cuba, uh, sent 750 doctors, 750 doctors and health professionals around uh, to the hurricane-ravaged <clears> places. <throat> but they couldn't come to Puerto Rico because of the Jones Act. Aid couldn't come in from other countries. Right. From, Explain from, from, what it is from and Venezuela what it means. Venezuela or from Mexico, from any of these other countries, the Jones Act means that anything coming into Puerto Rico has to be on an American ship. Uh, and so if Mexico wants to send uh, aid or, or, or supplies, it would have to first go into to Florida to be put onto an American ship to then taken uh, to Puerto Rico. It's just driving up the cost of uh, transporting this anything. This does us no good. Eventually, California, Nevada, Arizona, Texas, and that one part of Utah with all the Mormons will be on fire. And, okay, so the Utah thing was probably caused by, like, a disgruntled atheist, but let's go ahead and say that climate change is what disgruntled that person. I mean, these states will need aid, and unfortunately, paper towels will only fuel the fire more. Fire hates non-solution egomania, and also paper. And with the East Coast and Florida drowning, the rest of the country will have to deal with the influx of Floridians, so they won't be able to help. And the only places that might is Puerto Rico, Mexico, and maybe what's left of Australia. And they will remember that the Jones Act waiver was left to expire like so much forgotten milk in a college dorm room and ignore our calls. And while we're not sending aid to Puerto Rico, California is on fire. (sighs) I miss the days when you could say that the world was going to burn and it was actually a joke. The reality of climate change is ruining my career. According to bioclimatologist Park Williams, this is caused by increased rainfall leading to overvegetation, drought, and human kindling. 
kind of out to the coast. And by the time the air gets to the coast, it's compressed down to sea level. It's very warm and very dry. It pulls veg the uh, moisture out of vegetation, makes it ready to burn. And, and you said oh, before the show began that, that part of the problem may have been the rains that came earlier uh, this year? Yeah, so, so these fires out on the coast are very different from, from forest fires in that uh, uh, out near the coast of California, there's not a whole lot to burn oftentimes. We actually didn't hear a ton about uh, fires occurring near the coast of California during the big drought simply because it was so dry there wasn't much growing, so not much to burn. This year, though, follows a record-breaking wet or near-record-breaking wet uh, winter in, in California. And anybody who was in California in the spring knows it looked like the, like the English countryside with green, lush grass growing everywhere. Well, that's the stuff that's burning right now. Grass is a very effective uh, carrier of fast-moving fire, and all you need to do is dry the grass out. <laughs> add a flame and add very strong winds and that's and that's what's going on now and we wouldn't want california to burn that's that's where we keep the pretty people and a bunch of our weed and by the way you know that park williams is a legitimate climate scientist because he looks so very tired so tired of explaining to people the links of climate change caused by human activity to larger and larger fires and and that is the future of this problem finds that about half of the area of forests in the western u.s that have burned over the last 35 years is attributable to that warming trend and that half is really big it equals the size of massachusetts and connecticut combined and what about the issue of, uh, of urban sprawl, of a continued expansion of towns into areas, forest areas as well? Uh, that's been also raised as a, uh, as, a, as a factor that makes the spread of these fires even uh, more catastrophic. Absolutely. So the, so the first thing you need in order to have a fire is, of course, a spark that turns into a flame and, and carries through into a, into a large fire. And uh, in the western U.S., and especially in California, people are the providers of those sparks. At this time of year, there's, lightning is not occurring in, in uh, coastal California. It's sparks created by you're, people. You're, you said that we should be getting accustomed to even more and, and uh, uh, more virulent fires in the future. Could you talk about that as well? Yeah, so since the early 1980s, when we go back to talking about forests, since the early 1980s, we've seen the amount of area of forest that burns in a given year increase by 600 to 800 percent. And so these days, every year, we hear people who are fighting fires saying that they've been fighting fires for their whole career, say the last 30 years, and they're seeing fire activity different than anything they've seen uh, during their whole careers. Basically, by ignoring the issues linked to climate change, we're endangering the lives of future firefighters of America. And without firefighters, who will Republicans use as an emotional scapegoat? I mean, I guess they'll just have to stick to the flag and veterans, children, police officers, and anyone in a wheelchair. Now, there is a state of emergency in California, but no efforts to talk about how climate change contributed to this issue. We're just not talking about this issue. I mean, even meteorologists don't talk about it. And climate change has made their jobs a lot harder. I mean, they can't just roll out of bed from behind that green screen in the studio and with one bloodshot eye and uncannily perky nipples say, it's going to be cold in the winter. Get a jacket, Trevor. Bundle up, fella. But if part of the problem is that we are conditioned to think that anything related to the weather and science is boring, we have to think differently about this issue. And the only hope that we had was if Hollywood would have co-opted this idea and used the words climate change in the next disaster movie they make, it would have might have solved the problem, but with California on fire, that's probably not going to happen. If anything, Bollywood might beat America to it, and they'll have a catchy seven-minute song about how climate change is connected to human activity. At least the Trump administration is willing to help the citizens in California. His administration wants to save all the pretty bronze gods and goddesses because these aren't the uggos in Arizona and Oregon we're dealing with, but the citizens in Puerto Rico 
still remain to be in trouble. And this now proves that climate change is making our so-called leaders racist. It's, it's, it's all the heat. It confuses the brain and only makes you think about the surface of things. And, and if we've learned anything today, it's that we need to start getting deeper to find cooler water so we can all chill out. But Puerto Rico has hope. Elon Musk of Tesla has sent his Powerwall solar batteries and set up a microgrid for the citizens of Puerto Rico, USA. The current grid has sustained so much damage that it could take years to recover, similar to the idea of democracy and nuance. So Musk stepped in to help. Uh, uh, Puerto Rico, not democracy. I mean, he's only one man. He can't fix all the problems we've created. Now, this has led to a lot of praise and criticism of Musk. First of all, this is huge, right? This will help the people of Puerto Rico get electricity independent from a traditional grid way faster, twice as fast as it took Trump to throw those paper towels at people, and five times faster than this administration's efforts to help anybody. Solar power is also cheaper for people to use than a traditional grid, but that means that people that work for the utility will probably lose their jobs. But great news, Tesla will be hiring to get that solar grid up and running. He's also looking for interns. And that's probably true. Musk claims that his new deal with Puerto Rico has put him into production hell, which means that he's producing a lot of his solar batteries. And if this trend picks up, hopefully this will go into production purgatory. Another major complaint for Musk is that this is an experimental idea and Puerto Rico is in recovery right now. Well, you know what, maybe it wouldn't be if the states didn't bankrupt its territory's economy and keep giving it loans when it just needs help. And there's the issue in all this. In order to use a renewable source of power, we have to wait until a country has no other pr option. I mean, if this works, then Puerto Rico will become the proof of concept for Tesla's solar batteries, roofs, and cities. Which means we work away from the inefficient, antiquated grid system that is keeping our energy needs in a world where we had normal weather and weathermen that mattered. It would mean that a, a divestment from natural gas and oil, and that's going to mean that Republican congressmen will probably fall apart without their regular oil bats. And it would mean that we wreck the planet less. So this falls on us. We the people need to be more educated about the literal world around us. We have to listen to the tired scientists and urge more of our meteorologists to use the word climate change. And encourage people to have discussions about this. And if we can, then giving aid to countries that need it because of issues linked to climate change wouldn't really be a problem. And our future wouldn't involve an invasion of Floridians. And those folks only talk about the weather. We get it, Trevor. The sun makes you happy. It makes us all happy. Now invest in solar, you narcissist. That's been your Forkful of Noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for getting all the way to the end of this episode. Uh, if you enjoyed the content of this episode, please share it with your friends, your enemies, anyone you think might enjoy uh, this content. Uh, I have live stand-up comedy shows coming up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Knoxville, Tennessee, Philadelphia, PA. I'm going to be in Cumberland, Maryland, and Columbus, Ohio. Uh, for all those dates, you can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. While you're there, you can uh, like the Facebook page, follow me on Twitter. You can uh, also get all of my stand-up comedy albums, uh, which are available on iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, Pandora, Bandcamp. Uh, and if you would like to receive 
special unreleased stand-up comedy content and collections. Uh, you can subscribe to my Bandcamp for a couple shekels a month. And if you would like to support the show uh, financially, additionally, you can also donate to the Patreon at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, there are going to be updates coming to the Patreon, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, and if uh, if money is tight, that's totally okay. All of my content is uh, always going to be available for free. Uh, nothing will be behind a paywall. Uh, the Patreon and the Bandcamp subscriptions just mean that it's uh, an additional way to show appreciation for for this sort of stuff. Uh, and uh, a good way to help that's not financial is just to share. Uh, share share the the video, like the video on YouTube, Facebook, and VidMe, and uh, and let people know about the show. Uh, so I appreciate you guys doing all of that. I appreciate you guys tuning in every week. Thanks for getting into it.